Good morning. Welcome to Connect Daily Bread, episode two. Today we'll be reading out of Luke chapter two. This is out of the NIV translation, if you'd like to follow along. Starting in verse one. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cornelius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he had belonged to the house and line of David. He, was, he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths and put him, placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor left rest. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which was as the which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them but mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart the shepherds returned glorifying and praising god for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told on the eighth day when it was time to circumcise the child he was named jesus the name the angel had given before he was conceived when the time came for purification rites Required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child of Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Peniel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband 70 years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at the very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke by the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own home of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the fast fist. Every year they went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, 
Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with his and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So here we we get a ton of a ton of meat laid out there. Um, Jesus is is born, fulfilled the prophecy that he would be born in the town of Bethlehem. And we see how God's work in the background to arrange this, that there's a census called for at that time, which caused uh, Joseph and his wife to be uh, Mary to go to Bethlehem. And it's it's during this time that uh, that Jesus is born. There's nowhere for him to stay. So uh, he, he's born in the most humble of circumstances. God came to earth in the most humble of circumstances. He, he's born in a manger. And it's amazing to see who gets, uh, who gets a personal invitation to come and meet the king of the universe. And it's these shepherds that are out in the field uh, that these angels come and tell what has happened and, and who has just been born. And they end up going and getting to, to see Jesus. As this carries on, we, we see there's there's recognition. God keeps confirming and affirming uh, his son Jesus. And we see it with the uh, with the two prophets at the temple, uh, with a uh, Simeon, and he praises God. It's it's as if God had let him know that he was gonna see the Messiah, who was gonna come and be the savior of Israel, but not just Israel, the entire world that somehow God had let him know that this was going to take place before he passed. And so you see his excitement and you see him say, okay, now I may go in peace. Uh, but he gives a, a warning to to Mary about, uh, you know, what was going to take place with Jesus, that he would cause the rising and falling of many, that he'd be a sign who'd be spoken against, that hearts would be revealed through that. And then he warns Mary that uh, a sword would pierce her own soul too. Uh, and, and this this just is uh, a forewarning about all that Jesus, um, her boy, was going to have to have to endure, and that she would witness and see that. And we see uh, laid out that that Jesus really subjected himself to humanity. That it says he went home and he grew. On two occasions, we're told um, that that Jesus grew. And that he grew in wisdom and stature and favor. So, so in every respect, he, he grew. But while he was fully, fully human, made himself that, he was aware uh, that he was fully God as well. You see, um, when he stays behind and he's in, the, he's in the temple after the Passover festival, he's totally aware of who he is. Right? The parents are all freaked out. Mary and Joseph, why have you done this? Jesus says, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Uh, and, and we're told, uh, you know, he goes home from there and he's, he's obedient to his parents and once more highlighted that he continued to grow. Uh, and that's something if, if you and I are serious um, as Christians about becoming like Jesus, that prioritization is going to be uh, what's going to be the pathway to growth. See, Jesus prioritized being in the presence of his father, learning from him and listening from him. And if we're serious about growing, um, that's going to be something we've, we've got to be intentional about, about getting into the presence of the father, getting into his word, listening to him, praying, taking hold. Uh, and then we too, like Jesus, uh, will grow in stature and favor with God and people. So that's our lesson for today. Thanks. Love you guys.